What's going on everybody? I'm Raphael and welcome to my channel, Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to get both the iOS XRV and iOS XRV 9000 up and running inside of EVNG. iOS XR is a version of iOS that's used in high-end carrier grade routers like the ASR9000 for example. iOS XR routers can be virtualized just like the CSR1000V. And this is great because now we can learn the iOS XR operating system, we can prepare for service provider related certifications like the CCMP or CCIE, and we can even lab out proof of concepts at your job. Or just expand our skills and just be a Swiss army knife. All right, so how do you obtain these EVNG capable iOS XR images? Well, you can download them from Cisco's website or purchase a CML license, which provides a bunch of different images that you can use. And that's what I did. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna go inside of an EVNG lab and I wanna try to add an XRV device. So I'm gonna right click here anywhere in the lab. I'm going to add a new object. I'm gonna select node. And under all these images here, I'm just gonna filter by XR. So if I type XR, you can see these images here. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but these are grayed out. I'm not able to select them. And that's because I don't have them. Let's fix that. All right, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to go to your favorite file transfer program. I like FileZilla. And you need to SFTP into your even GVM. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. I've already got my uh, host username and password filled out. So I'm gonna click Quick Connect. Perfect, I've successfully connected to my EVNG machine. The directory that I wanna to go to is opt, unit labs, add-ons, and Kimu. And here's the images I currently have on the server. So this right half of the screen here, this right half of the screen here, this is my EVNG VM. The left half is my local computer, my PC. Here are the two images that I wanna use. I wanna use the iOS XRV 631 and the iOS XRV9000 662. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight both of these. I'm gonna drag them over into this directory. We can see the progress bar down here is going. And let's give that a few to complete. Perfect, they're both in here. So let's go ahead and double check these. So we have the folder here. We have the QCAL image, this YAML file. I don't need this, I'm gonna delete this. Let me do the same thing for the other folder. Delete this YAML file. And you can see here I have the QCAL image for the XRV 9K. And are we done? No, we're not. Very important when you're working with EVNG, you need to make sure that the folder names and the image names themselves match with EVNG's documentation. If you are using a name different than what EVNG is expecting, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to use these images. So how do we find out what name we're supposed to use for the folder and the image, we head over to the EVG website, eve-ng.net. What you wanna do is you wanna click documentation right here. Then over here on the left, you wanna click Kimu image namings. Now here you're gonna find a table for every single image that EVNG supports, what the folder name is supposed to be and what the image name is supposed to be. So let's go ahead and look for these Cisco XRVs. If I scroll down here, I should find them towards the bottom. Okay, perfect, so they're actually the last two. So it's telling us if we're using the XRV, the folder name must begin with this, the image name must be this. If we're using the XRV 9Ks, the folder name must begin with this, the image must be named this. You have to name these correctly, okay? So let's go back to our FileZilla and rename our folders and our images to what Eve is expecting. Okay, so now that I'm back on FileZilla, let's work on the XRV first. We know the folder name needs to change. It needs to begin with XRV dash. So I'm gonna rename it XRV, and the dash is already there. And then as long as you have what even G's expecting here, you can put whatever you want at the end. And to me, it makes the most sense to put the image version, so 631. Let's go into the folder. We know that the image name needs to be HDA. So we're gonna rename it to HDA. Hit enter, perfect. Let's go ahead and go to the XRV9000. The folder name needs to be XRV9K dash. And then as long as we have that, we can put whatever we want at the end. XRV9K dash. And I'm gonna keep the image version here at the end. Let's go into the folder. We know the image name needs to be vert IOA, so let's go ahead and rename that. 
vert IOA. Okay, perfect. So right now, the XRV and the XRV9K, the folder names and the image names are correct. This is very important. If you misspell it or you put a typo in there, you're gonna try and add the image on your even GLAB and it's not gonna show up. And you're gonna be like, what the heck's going on? Double check that the folder name and the image names are correct. And again, you can verify that information by going to EvenG's website. Now that we've done that, we have one more step and that's to fix the permissions. So I'm gonna SSH into my EvenG VM. Okay, let me zoom in here for you. The last thing you need to do is paste this opt, unit lab, wrappers, UNL wrapper, dash A, fix permissions, and hit enter. This is a good sign here that this says valid. Let's let the process finish and make sure there's no crazy errors and we should be good to go. All right, perfect. Let's go to EvenG and try and add our new images. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if we're able to add these XRVs. Add a new node, filter by XR. Okay, perfect. Now these icons are blue. They're not grayed out anymore, so I'm able to select them. Let's select the XRV first. If I scroll down, I can see some of the details. It was allocated one CPU, three gigs of RAM by default. Let's hit save. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the XRV 9000, filter by XR. All right, if we scroll down, we look at the details. By default, it's allocating four CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM. Guys, the XRV 9K is resource hungry. So make sure you check your CPU in your memory to make sure you're not running out of resources. Let's go ahead and click save. All right, perfect. Right click these, hit start. And they boot it up. Let's go ahead and connect to these guys. All right, let me connect to the other one. Okay, so now I'm gonna give this a few minutes to boot and I'm gonna come back once they are done. All right, perfect. The XRV and XRV9Ks have booted up. Let's go ahead and come up with a username. We'll put Raphael, we'll put a password. Let me go over to the XRV and do the same thing. Enter a root system username, Raphael, put a password. All right, let's log in. Okay, there we go, we're in. Config T, router, question mark. Have all these routing protocols, awesome. Let's go ahead and do this for the 9K. Beautiful. Config T, router question mark, and here's all the options that we have. And that's all there is to it. I will say that the XRV 9K took a lot longer to boot. I'd say about 20 minutes to uh, initially come up. The XRV was pretty quick. That was up in about five minutes. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. The iOS XRV and XRV 9000 are successfully up and running inside of EvenG. Keep in mind, the XRVs are resource hungry, especially the XRV 9000. So keep an eye on your EvenG CPU and memory just in case. One other thing is to go through the Cisco documentation for that platform because there might be an end of life announcement or maybe some sort of feature limitation that may or may not affect you. That's gonna be it for now. I really hope that this video helped you get your XRVs up and running. If it did and you found this information valuable, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button in this video. It really does help the YouTube algorithm push this content in front of more faces and grow the channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. That's gonna be it for now. Thanks everyone, have a great day and lab on.